For Sunday, December 22nd, you found the Georgia Gang. And topping our agenda today, health care takes a new turn in Georgia. Mayor Bottoms wants to reopen some airport contracts, and a state senator is indicted. Some of the stories up for grabs on the Georgia Gang. From the Fox 5 studios, the Georgia Gang starts now. And good morning and Merry Christmas to everyone. Uh, this is the long week, the week that few people go to work, I suspect. <laughs> but we're here, we're ready. <laughs> and, uh, you know, at, after we taped last week, we learned that a federal judge in Texas had struck down Obamacare, uh, at least the very core of it. And it changes the health care picture that we've been looking at in Georgia a whole lot. Lori, I, I, uh, I think now Governor Kemp, who has been somewhat vague, mm -hmm. looking for a bigger solution, now has got to bring in the experts and do something serious in Georgia. And we know that this case will ultimately end up at the U.S. Supreme Court like the others, but they really have to do something with rural health care. And Stacey Abrams, during her campaign, brought a lot of attention to that issue, but there's also that, that gap where if you make too much to qualify for Medicaid, but you don't make enough to qualify for the tax credits, what are you to do? And it's those folks that they really have to pay attention to and really fix the problems. The other thing Republicans have to, have to watch, there are really popular programs among Republicans and Democrats. Um, the pre-existing conditions, they've got to keep those. P politically, they have to keep those. And also, it's very popular because there were kids who couldn't find jobs right out of college to keep them on your parents' insurance. I totally agree with you on pre-existing conditions. I think that was the Democrats' signal best issue uh, in the campaigns of 2018. Oh. Certainly was in the suburbs, yeah. all across the nation. And uh, the Republicans have got to figure a way out of that. Phil, do you ever think that Attorney General Chris Carr uh, said, uh, oh, let's do this and uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think he did the right thing. I mean, Obamacare is expensive and tyrannical, and the Republicans rightly had to dismantle it. And um, the tax stipulation was taken away by the Congress, and so that's what led to the federal judges ruling the other day that it's unconstitutional, and yes, it will be going to the Supreme Court. I disagree with uh, Dick with the vagueness. I think Governor Kemp and Lieutenant Governor uh, Duncan have been very clear on their health care. It didn't get much coverage in the liberal Atlanta paper, but uh, basically what's going to happen uh, with rural health care is, and I, I hope it's going to be bipartisan, it looks like it might be bipartisan, but uh, you up the uh, the tax credit for hospitals in rural areas, I, I think there would be agreement on that, and also with this tyrannical certificate of need, CON, C-O-N, um, that's going to be looked at uh, by uh, Governor Kemp and the, uh, and the legislature, and basically uh, if you want to build a new medical facility uh, or expand another one, you have to go hat in hand to the bureaucracy and, and other hospitals to do it. It's been a real problem. If you want to help health care in this state, you need to revise and reform and get rid of uh, the CON law. Darren, is that just a, a free enterprise at work? Well, a few points I want to make about how we got to this judgment. You know, if you look at the state of Texas, uh, it's one of the highest, if not the highest state that has the most uninsured Americans, number one. Number two, a 2012 ruling by the Supreme Court, 5-4, Justice Roberts, if you remember, was the deciding vote, and it has already deemed that Obamacare was constitutional. And so what's really um, unfortunate about this, and I think Lori hit on this, is that uh, beyond the pre-existing conditions, but children who are born with these pre-existing conditions. I mean, we've seen story after story of having children go on television to talk about how Obamacare has helped them live a healthier life and a better life. And so, again, I think that it's going to be very important that the attorney generals, not only in Georgia, but all over the United States, we're going to hear the word waiver a lot. A lot of these Democratic attorney generals are probably going to appeal the, the Supreme uh, the judge's decision in Texas. And so, I do believe that this is going to be a big issue issue going into the presidential elections. And I think it's a lot more than rural elections. Absolutely. I think I, I think it's the middle class in general Absolutely. that is hanging here. In the balance. And I think what's going to happen is because it's going to be a protracted uh, issue with going through the court system that the people who have this insurance coverage now are going to keep it in the time being, and so they're just going to have to deal with it. And I think the certificate of need issue is going to be a big fight down at the Capitol. That's going to be tough to get through because it's been in place since the 70s, and it was aimed to improve access and cut the cost of health care. How's that working for us? Well, it's aimed to protect all these rural hospitals all around the state. And, uh, and, in and the they're, metro, they're closing. And, and in Metro Atlanta, it doesn't seem to be a big factor. It's an occasional annoying factor. But I think it really is aimed at the rural, and I think you're right. Uh, 
I think the time now with this ruling, the certificate of need question is going to be resolved in this session. The other thing is they might have to bring up the discussion about expanding Medicaid again. I understand that Mississippi is looking at expanding Medicaid. Right? Well, that's why they're talking about a waiver, waiver. rather that's than expansion. Waiver. Well, because, uh, yeah. you know, uh, well, I know you always say money grows on trees, but uh, that would break the bank. You'd lose your AAA bond rating. It but would be a nightmare. It would save a lot of the rural hospitals, and it would create uh, jobs. I, I, think, I think con reform would be, a, if you want to look at rural well, hospitals. And Phil, so, look at the way what you're really trying to do is make sure that able-bodied people who receive Medicaid are working. That's There's about a 10% group there that is eligible for these programs well, you're where they a want good to put point. in some work requirements. You're making a good point. In a footnote to the pre-existing uh, condition issue that we've been talking about, I don't know of any Republicans of any stripe that uh, is opposing that. I think all Republicans uh, want to retain that. No, uh, I know the all. Trump administration wants to retain it. I think Brian Kemp wants to retain it. So I think this is kind of a false yeah, issue. I feel good about it, the fact that Tom Price, regardless of his outcome with the Trump administration, Tom Price is an expert. And when he was uh, the chairman in Washington, in Congress, he had a health care plan. Even before the Republicans came back into the majority, Tom Price was hammering a health care plan, and I trust him on that because practicing physician. He knows the, well, the and, ropes on that. And in truth, the, the original Obamacare plan was based on the plan by uh, give Mitt, me Romney. His, Mitt Romney, Romney out of Massachusetts. So when he well, was somewhat. governor there. Well, and somewhat. I don't think it was an accident that Brian Kemp put Tom Price on his transition team because <coughs> he may come up with a way that other states haven't done and, and really have a unique plan just for Georgia. Well, and I think Tom Price has a 50-state 50, 50 view. He knows what works and what doesn't. Mm -hmm. Well, I agree. And I, I think Lieutenant Governor Jeff Duncan, uh, is, is this is very underreported in the media, has an excellent plan. And I know Brian Kemp has, uh, has been uh, looking at some of his reform steps to try to keep insurance rates down. Well, well when we talk about the good guys, let's talk about the bad guys. Mm -hmm. In that Republican primary this year, there was a fifth candidate. Mm -hmm. uh, the attention all, of course, went to Casey Cagle and uh, Brian Kemp. And, and uh, but there was Michael Williams, who had the deportation no relation. He had the deportation. <laughs> he had the deportation bus. Not that I disagree with the deportation bus. Okay. But that was his gimmick. Mm -hmm. I just and, hated that it broke down. Yeah, that's yeah, right. That was bad. And Michael Williams was clearly the most outspoken. I hate to use the word this way. Populist candidate for governor. Uh, and his statements well, always looked like they were President issued Trump. through a flamethrower. And now we find out, Phil, that he's been indicted for crying out loud. <coughs> well, that's right. The the issue uh, is, has to re, uh, revolve around apparent, an apparent burglary at his campaign headquarters where servers were stolen. For crypto mining. Uh, yes. Uh, what is, yeah, crypto mining. And and I'm, I'm having to try to keep a straight face here. It doesn't make much sense. He's accused of actually lying where he was during the so-called burglary. And again, an indictment is an indictment, but I, I agree with you. I think that he was a distraction during the campaign. And um, I don't know, some of this, uh, he better get his, uh, his facts straight because uh, it doesn't look good when you just read about it. Well, let's be clear. He was indicted for <laughs> insurance fraud, yes. making a false report. And about we all thought that. he made his money with a chain of uh, haircutting salons. Uh, one of those uh, franchises where you get zip in for a quick haircut. But he was deeply involved, apparently, in cryptocurrency. Who knew? Yeah, we didn't know. But you know, you had mentioned that Casey Cagle and Brian Kemp were getting all the attention. He was trying to get the attention with never these political did. stunts and just never. Well, you came remember to he called a news conference on some very important news, and then when he, he got there, there was no important news. No, uh -uh. a lot of political stunts. <laughs> and the bus did break down at the eleventh <laughs> hour. Right. That's true. So he did get attention for that. <laughs> yes. All right. When we come back, a major change at the top of state government. And uh, yeah, well, that'll, we'll step with that. Stay with us. Have a question or comment for the Georgia Gang? Email them at georgiagang at foxtv.com. A major change at the state capitol, not one that you would equate with electoral politics, but Vernon Keenan, the longtime director of the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, decided to retire. Uh, I think all of us have Vernon Keenan stories, but. Uh, he, he truly, t to me anyway, the guy's a movie. Hmm. Uh, he shows up, shows up with his slouch hat and his overcoat, and he seems like a character out of a out of a novel or a movie. Uh, and Phil, what do you think? Uh, 
this this is a plum job. Well, it is. As the head of the GBI Georgia Bureau of Investigation, and um, I think that uh, Governor Leg Kemp uh, is going to look very hard at various people, including Vic Reynolds, the DA of Cobb County. Um, Reynolds has been instrumental in the Kemp campaign's great focus on the rising gang crime here in this state. And uh, I think that whether it's GBI or whether it might be another position, Vic Reynolds uh, would be um, a prime candidate. Whether he wants to do it, I have no earthly idea. And I think Brian Kemp wants to be the governor that breaks the criminal gangs in this state. Well, I, I agree. And uh, now another item from state government this week. We, it seems like we mention this every week, but it's worth it. Governor Deal announced another major uh, employer moving to the state. A, uh, is it a French company in Gwinnett County? Uh, I'm not sure the name. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Maybe. But they're going to bring several hundred jobs into the Snellville area. It's, huh? it's Hapag Lloyd, and it's a shipping company. But I love the bite that they said. The reason, part of the reason why they were expanding, Southern hospitality is a little bit of the magic juice that helps our company grow and prosper. That oh. might be a good one for the Department of Economic Development yes. to take on. Well, <laughs> yes. And then staying on Snellville for just a minute, uh, the mayor there, mm -hmm. the longtime mayor, a fellow named Tom Witt, uh, was indicted on was it 67 counts. Yes. And he yeah. pleaded guilty this week to 11 uh, felony charges, but will get no jail time. And uh, they've been after that guy in Gwinnett County for, what, 10 years? Well, I'm glad he's gone, but I'm a little surprised at, uh, at the weakness of the prosecution and the deal that was cut. We usually don't see this. But he's Danny sick. Porter, he has cancer. His wife has cancer also. But I knew that was probably a very tough decision for Danny Porter, who's not known to be weak on crime. No, and Danny Porter's been pursuing this guy like Inspector okay. Javert and Les Miserables. <laughs> I may not be able to pronounce that other French company, but I did <laughs> that, that pretty well. That one really well. <laughs> All right, now to you, Theron, because uh, Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms announced this week in a meeting with the editors of the AJC that, that she's going to reopen the airport contracts that were not signed or, or finally agreed to by Kasim Reed. Uh, and they're on several of the concourses, they're very lucrative. Uh, what's her intention here? Well, I think she knew that coming in and sort of continuing this theme of being a very open and transparent mayor, that there was definitely some questions that were raised from some procurement um, that went through the airport uh, under the Reed administration. There were companies who actually got recommended by a, uh, a committee to actually get the mayor's signature and they haven't been signed. And so I think what the mayor said was is that there are just some old contracts there. There are some uh, people who are not even together who bid on some of these uh, contracts. And so, you know, I want to be fully disclosed. You know, my company, we represent it and still represent some companies that want to do business at the airport legally. Um, and so the companies who spent hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars to put these proposals together, some of them went through the process and got recommended. Now they got to start all over again. And so the question then becomes, mm -hmm. how soon will the mayor now re-release these RFPs? Uh, I think she talked about a lot of this new transition with the new chief procurement office as far as e-government. Uh, well, she said she wasn't going to do it until she had that all in order, right? right. And the one thing that the article did also say is that she's really taking her time to give the chief procurement officer, mm -hmm. uh, David Wilson, an, an opportunity to really come in and sort of do a very deep dive into current procurement structures. And once that's done and that's completed, she's going to re-release these RFPs and then everyone will be able to reapply or apply. Isn't, isn't it likely, Phil, that losers will sue uh, that, that this could devolve into some chaos we, because we, people yes, who, yes. who are there with the capital investment uh, and that's a good could point. be thrown out. That's a good point. And a couple other points. Uh, let's remember that um, there's a federal corruption investigation that involves the airport and contracting and procurement. The last procurement officer, Adam Smith, was jailed for bribery. Uh, I've always described uh, the procurement process as a cesspool of corruption. I think Keisha Lance Bottoms, the mayor, finally is tacitly admitting that it has been a cesspool of corruption. And I'm, I'm glad she's taking these Come steps, on. but I don't think that um, another mayor, it, let's say Keisha Lance Bottoms is a great mayor, another mayor could go right back to what Kasim Reed did. And so that's why I think the legislature is seriously going to look at uh, the state airport authority yeah, taking it over from the city of Atlanta and its corrupt yeah, practices. Her, her decision to rebid these contracts is not an admission of corruption. Mm -hmm. What it is is saying, hey, I'm a new mayor. It happened under an old mayor. I've given a chief procurement officer enough time to come in and look at the process. 
I'm going to rebid all these contracts to make sure that it's a fair she's and proper She's throwing process. the old mayor under the bus. No, no, no she's well, not. Well, I think what she is doing is cleaning up the mess that she was given. Um, and here we go with a whole new procurement process, right. a procurement chief who's in place now. Um, she's got the open checkbook where you can look at all the city contracts. Um, these million dollar contracts are going to be under scrutiny as well that you can go online and see where they are. And also, you know, she's opened the investigation into Kwanzaa Hall's hiring. So I think she, I, I applaud her for doing this because she does open the city up up to lawsuits, but I think it's a step in the right direction. I agree, and also the the fact that she's going to convert it to an electronic process too is going to help simplify and streamline the process for bidders. And, and also allows the public to look at it, I see guess. See what's going on, yeah. 21st but, century move. Yeah. But you would agree that there's probably a corruption problem when the city's chief procurement officer is in prison as we speak. There was a problem, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. For okay. with, with, But it doesn't mean it was the whole system, it just means that person. Okay. Got to get out. When we come back, a story we've talked about a lot. Uh, did Fulton County collect its property taxes correctly in 2017? A judge says yes. We'll see. Join the discussion on the Georgia Gang Facebook page and watch past episodes on the Georgia Gang YouTube channel. Before we dive into the Fulton County tax mess, uh, we have this note following up on last week's broadcast. State Senator Burt Jones contacted us in response to our discussion about whether the state should take control of Hartsfield-Jackson Airport from the city of Atlanta. Senator Jones told us this. In the more than 50 years existence of my family's business, he says, we have never once even mentioned doing business inside the confines of Hartsfield-Jackson, and we have no future plans of doing so. So that wraps that up. For now, now let's turn to Fulton County. Uh, we've we've tried to follow this story now for two years, <laughs> and finally there's at least some resolution. It has to do with Fulton County's uh, 2017 tax digest, which which just bombed Fulton County homeowners. It was a mm -hmm. a disaster. Property values have recovered from the recession. They were much higher. People got huge bills, 100 percent higher, 50 percent higher, and the county backed off went back to the 2016 digest, the state said, Phil, no, you can't do that. You've got to have an accurate assessment of your property values. I think the state was correct in that, and this has dragged on for far too long, as we all know. And uh, I don't understand State Revenue Commissioner Lynn Riley's position. I think, and she's already done this uh, over in Columbus, I think that uh, Fulton County ought to be fined, and I think we ought to move ahead and, and put this behind us rather than letting it drag out. I don't understand uh, Lynn Riley's position. Well, we don't know if she's going to appeal. Mm -hmm. that, that's one thing, Lori. I think, you, you know, there's the issue of 159 counties. If you let the big boy, the biggest county, get away with that. But she cut a deal with Columbus uh, where they let them pay a fine and then move ahead. Okay, well, I, you I, could I cut still a deal. think you it's got to be adjusted. You could cut a deal tomorrow with Fulton County and move on. It is time to move on. You said we've been talking about this for two years. It's complicated, right. it's complex, and this magistrate judge rolled on this, so I fully expect the state to appeal and not let just a magistrate judge decide such an important issue. So we well, shall see. We'll see. All right. Uh, in the meantime, I still think Fulton County taxpayers ought to be prepared at some point to write another check <laughs> for the 2017 taxes. I really do. Well, you know, it's, um, it's the right thing to do. Fulton County Commissioner Chairman Rob Pitts said that, and I quote, he said it was great news and a great day for Fulton County residents. Um, he also said that, and I quote, it's a great Christmas present for the taxpayers of Fulton County. So it seems like the chair of this county uh, commission that is kind of involved in this decision is sort of embracing this this new rule. Well, I think decision. the whole commission is, yeah. is embracing it. I don't think it's just they Rob Pitts. They, they, they want to move on. on. Yeah, and I think, you know what I've always said to Fulton Countyans, always appeal your assessment. And uh, Darren, back in your wheelhouse, related to Fulton County, kind of an interesting move. The Fulton County Development Authority uh, had, a, had an opening. Mm -hmm. And uh, Lee Morris, one of the commissioners, chose to appoint the Atlanta Superintendent of Schools, Maria Karstarfen, to the board of the Economic Development Authority, which rules on these major tax breaks that companies get when they mm -hmm. come here or expand. 
It's a very interesting appointment, um, and I know that we, you know, we've talked about it. Um, I, I would assume that a superintendent of the Atlanta public school system will have some knowledge and background on economic development in the city and the region. Um, but there may be some folks that say, you know, this is a very important uh, authority that has oversaw the, as you pointed out, incentives and in different programs and um, partnerships to bring new businesses and new developments to the city. So, you know, it's, it's really a strange appointment to me, but let's just see how it, you know, plays out. It'll be interesting to watch how she votes on some of these. Is she going to be always a no um, and, and to see what direction she will take? Because yeah, and we know where she is on some of the big development, like the Gulch. Because virtually yeah. everything the Fulton County Development Authority approves involves less money, future money, going to the Atlanta Public Schools. Virtually all of it. So I yeah. don't know what I, I think that puts her in a. It's a, it's a very it's, strange position. Well, it seems almost like a conflict of interest for her to Thank be. Thank you. On I do. Like, oh, there you go. I That's what nice I think too. I was being nice this week. Well, I don't get it. And well, I, I, think, I, think that, I think the school system does need a watchdog over some of the shenanigans uh, like the Gulch where the, where the, uh, uh, the school it system does. was gouged from tax money, but I don't think she's the right person mm. to, to be that. there to do it. Well, and I don't think it's shenanigans, but that's been the practice for, what, forever? Five, the incentives, five, the government five incentives billion dollars to, worth of to attract business. But she's also running a school system. Here's another thing. That's, that's her question. main job. When does I mean, she have time? That's her job, right. right. When does she have time? Right, exactly. To do the homework, to do the what's interesting. Let's uh, look at Washington. We don't know what's going on in Washington. It's chaos. We could, as we, uh, as you see us on Sunday morning, we could be in a government shutdown. Mm. No idea. Uh, partial government shutdown. Who knows? But it was interesting that some of our representatives played a major part in some of the things that happened in Washington this week. Lori, David Perdue uh, helped shape this uh, criminal justice reform that passed overwhelmingly with bipartisan support. Right, we got that, but here we are with a budget showdown again around Christmas time. So we know that um, David Perdue said, you know what, let's fight it out, let's see where it goes. But he's in the minority of the Senate. And it's the house where the holdup is. You're now. talking with regard to border security. Yes. 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 I would hope everyone would be for border security, except everyone the liberals is, aren't. Everyone is for border security. It's the oh, five billion dollar price it's, it's tag. The, it's the right. the uh, hijacking. Well, then why don't the why don't the Democrats the come up with uh, with well, uh, fencing they, they, they or? They do have a plan, and it, it's it, can, it has to do with 21st century technology and not. They haven't. They have not. Walls. They have not proceeded with any plan. Nothing wrong with the wall. Ask the Israelis. Yeah, but but Phil, I'm still well, waiting for. Is, I thought how, that the president said that Mexico was going to pay for it. Oh, listen. I mean, what happened to that yeah, army deal? Why, why I mean, I, I, you know, know, they're building their own wall. Oh, they're building their own wall. And he, <laughs> then he created this GoFundMe page. Yeah, oh, let me I think, answer you. You know, raised seven million. Let, let me answer I mean, where's did you. Mexico? See, did you see the great treaty that they did on trade with I Mexico? You talked about it. Money is coming in. There's a giant sucking sum from Mexico coming back. The United not States. For the wall. Oh, listen, having he served, made that promise on the campaign. Having served oh, for U.S. <laughs> Senator on Capitol Hill, you can find five billion dollars anywhere. I Whether he wins can. or loses, he's going to get the five billion. And to quote the late five Everett Dirksen, I thought it was five billion. A billion five here, billion. a billion there, and pretty soon you're talking about real, real money. money. Get it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right. <Get> it. <laughs> when we come back, winners and losers. <laughs> Time now for the week's winners and losers. And I want to wish my colleagues a very Merry Christmas. And Merry Christmas. Happy for holidays. winners and losers, let's Merry do it in Christmas. the spirit of Christmas. All right. Darren? All right, real quick. Burke Mark High School Principal Alfred Taylor is my winner this week. He kindly wrote a um, personalized thank you note to all of his teachers in his school, wishing them a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. And then also Officer Flores, uh, the DeKalb County cop who uh, died in the line of duty uh, was an immigrant to this uh, to this county and really died as an American hero and also the uh, canine Indy uh, who was wounded uh, injured during the pursuit of the uh, accused killer officer Flores so I want to give uh, them a big shout out and hope the dog recovers quickly Phil. and soon. I got a winner, Atlanta attorney Jake Evans. He was named by Governor Deal just the other day to head the old uh, Ethics Committee, the Campaign the Finance and Transparency Committee, and I think he'll be good at that helm. I think that uh, Sonny Perdue, our former governor and, and egg secretary, is tightening up the uh, work rules for uh, food stamps. He wants able-bodied people to only uh, not get them. That's fine. And got his farm bill passed. And, and got his farm bill. And then State Senator Burt Jones, who you mentioned, he is my winner because he's going to move forward in the legislative session 
with uh, trying to get state authority adult supervision over the corrupt procurement process at the airport. Lori? Vernon Keenan is my winner. Here's a man who dedicated his life to law enforcement almost 40 years with the GBI, so congratulations on his announcement for retirement. Yes, he gets that, Alexis. All right, I'm going to congratulate uh, Wanda Dunham. She was promoted from deputy chief to chief of police for MARTA, so congratulations to her. And then Janetta Cole was elected. She was former president of Spelman, was elected to the National Council of Negro Women as chair, replacing Ingrid Saunders-Jones. So congratulations to both of them. All right, and uh, I will just say quickly, she's back, I think. Mary Norwood will become the new incoming chair of the Buckhead Council of Neighborhoods, a very important body hmm. in the city planning process, one with a lot of clout. And uh, I'm not saying that this will put Mary Norwood at odds with Keisha Lance Bottoms, but she's back and she will have a position of, of some prominence. And Merry Christmas to everyone. Uh, we will see you next year. Yeah, next year on the Georgia Gang. Stay with us. The opinions expressed in this broadcast are those of the panelists appearing in this program.